try out everything because mm-hmm. you don't know what will stick when i quit my job they actually rehired me as a contractor oh, wow. and paid way more than what i was getting paid the next month it was like an alicia keys gig when you let go of something that's not serving you any purpose anymore there's so much abundance and blessings that come what is up and welcome to the Cinepax podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Casey. My co-host, Andy Chin, is actually out sick right now. But today, I'm excited to have an incredibly talented guest on, Desiree LeCap, who you might know as LeCapture on Instagram and YouTube, TikTok as well. Uh, Desiree has worked with really big names like Alicia Keys, g Easy, and many big brands like Adobe. Uh, La Capture has made a name for herself in the filmmaking community by sharing tons of useful content that helps creators elevate their work. Thanks for coming on today. I'm happy to be here. I'm excited. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, you just got back from uh, the Sony event. We were talking about that a little bit before. Yeah. Um, what was that like? It was inspiring. Like just waking up with other creators and photographers and filmmakers, it just sparks this inspiration within making you want to even do way better than you already are and then just kind of peeping game from everybody as well and being there it was it was crazy like over 300 people the food waking up in the at the ritz carlton like it was just insane it was my first one so it was more i was kind of flowing through it because i didn't know what to do because they did have models that you could book and everything like that but i was just like i kind of want to see how everybody else does it and then crossing fingers get invited again next year and then just have a plan action going in yeah, I mean, I feel like the um, the little piece of content you did make was pretty sick, like where you're like standing out in the window, and I, I feel like you did good enough where the hell, uh, they should invite you back. But I know, um, I hope for so. for those of those for the people who don't really know about the Sony event, like what can you kind of do there, like as a creator, like um, what are like some of the perks of going to this, like what can you see? I could see a lot of collaborations among other filmmakers or content creators or photographers even they also like i mentioned they have models like over 10 models that you could book during certain times and you could there's also workshops there was a lot of workshops i didn't go to any of them really i was kind of just vibing through the ritz carlton um you could also there's like sunrise walks yoga sound baths there's a lot of activities that you could do that actually help like your mental health in a way and kind of just get hands-on with it rather than just having a camera but it's really cool because you're in an environment where you're just everybody else is filming themselves so it's not weird you know like you're you're going out in public and you're just like it's kind of intimidating having my camera because people are staring at you so yeah there's a lot of things that you could do with sony i thought it was kando it's con though it's like japanese gotcha yeah so there's a lot to do shout out sony yeah that's crazy for real, the community is crazy for sony I love yeah it. that's fire um but let's jump back a little bit so when did this filmmaking journey kind of um come about because i came across you on tiktok i saw you just like constantly making uh content around the bay area so when did this journey kind of start for you um you were filming you know tiktok's consistently like when did you get into filmmaking it was probably when i was young middle school but i never thought i'd be going to it as a full-time career because i grew up in a very traditional filipino household and it was i actually tried to go to college for kinesiology and something in the medical field just to conform into what my parents or my family wanted me to do but there was one day in class i probably failed statistics like four times and i was in there i was like dude this ain't for me like my left brain does not work like i'm such a creative so i finally pursued filmmaking and the way i got into it was i got it was my first camera the canon 7d and it was old i mean obviously it's really old yeah but what year was this like 2015 20 not even 2015 because I didn't even know what I want to do back then. Gotcha. Like 2018. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So kind of recent, not really. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got my first camera and I had a homie. He did music and I was like, yo, let me do a mini documentary on your, your journey as a music artist. And then let me do point and shoot music videos. So from the get, I've always created my own opportunities. And then I started to realize during COVID, it helped me rather than hurt me because that was a time where I was able to really understand myself as a creator i'm still understanding myself but i was like dude i have a passion for wanting to 
share the knowledge that I have and then pass it on to people who do want to get into filmmaking or content creating. So I started on TikTok because I was like, I think you could break the algorithm for TikTok in a way. Like back then it was super, it was kind of easy to crack the algorithm. So I, I before I did film tips though, I was doing soul speaking sessions where I just mm. took myself out, had tea and just spoke pretty vulnerably to the camera. And then I was like, no, I want to do film stuff. So I remember, and this was when I had a nine to five job. It was pretty remote, so it was flexible. I wrote down 10 how-to gimbal moves, like super easy. I called my homie and I was like, yo, meet me at the park. I'm just going to film my, my Canon G7X, put on a tripod and then use you as a sh- subject. And then my goal for that month, which was like March 2022, 21, was to get 10K followers on TikTok by posting consistently every single day. Mm-hmm. And then once I hit that goal, I was like, okay, what else can I do? So I just kept going from there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And where were you doing this? Uh, you were in the Bay Area, right? Yeah, I was yeah. in the Bay. Where mm-hmm. where uh, were you at in the Bay at that time? I was in San Mateo. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Cool. So there's a lot of surrounding areas I could just go out and film. For sure. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, I feel like especially during like, um, like COVID, like TikTok was crazy because like that's how we were able to grow Cinepax was like mm-hmm. through TikTok. And it was just crazy like when a platform is like fresh like that and you kind of just find like this groove and you can just like create like, you know what I mean? Just yeah. find like a... Uh, Cause like TikTok was just so fresh, especially for like filmmakers. Like Mm -hmm. there was like, I don't know, like a handful of creators on the platform. So like if you just made a piece of content, like, yeah, I don't know. It's just crazy. It kind of felt like new land at that point. It really was. I remember actually just at this point I was in Daily City during COVID. Mm -hmm. And I remember specifically pulling up the TikTok app and um, recording in the app because i never really yeah, do that yeah, with yeah. my content yeah for sure and that was my first time ever playing with tiktok and i was like oh absolutely not like i'm not doing this and it was so weird i felt like an amateur at that point but and then i found my groove like a year later yeah using the in-app tiktok tiktok app is kind of crazy but mm-hmm. sometimes it works for quick dirty content mm-hmm. so was there a period so when you're making this content were you still doing like the i've definitely heard like or i've seen that you do music videos and you were doing like other things like what was kind of like that journey like were you doing like the classic like videographer stuff or like Mm -hmm. what was that kind of like were you you were still working a job right yeah i was so i was still working a nine to five which was granted i was still doing what i loved like editing and shooting because they would give me opportunities to be on sets and like be Mm -hmm. a dp so that was cool i think initially why i left was because i still felt kind of not heard or stuck um but during that time i was also taking on gigs like uh i think a lot of brands started to come in during that time as well so i was doing a lot of content around that and then music videos i'm very heavy on music videos still uh, till this day so i was doing a ton of that as well um Mm -hmm. there's repeating artists that i work with so we kind of already understand our relationship and collaboration so that's really cool i was also doing weddings at the time gotcha and realizing that is not my jam (laughs) because it's just too long um i mean i wouldn't mind doing it but because i have so many other like avenues i think it's good to try everything especially if you're just starting out but yeah i was doing music videos um documentaries um brand content and video work for corporate gigs and stuff that's funny you say that because I wanted to ask you um, because you're you're a content creator now we're getting into that transition but um, I wanted to ask you like if you weren't doing content creation which one of those like you know facets would you have picked you know yeah. like in the videography stage so it's definitely not wedding no weddings. absolutely not <laughs> it's like it's great but it's not at the same time they're just really long days and I like yeah. to implement storytelling and although you could with weddings yeah. it's just not the way I want to story tell. Yeah, it's definitely, it's also stressful because Dude, like, know. You're, it, you know, you have to deal with like these people and everything. And it's like this, you're, you're also just a part of this event. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So you're kind of just like trying to fit in and yeah, I did weddings for a minute, but I, I, I think that journey is good. Like being able to try everything, mm-hmm. um, like, you know, documentary, everything like that. Um, you know, like brand videos. I feel like just trying every single thing is really important, especially when just doing video and figuring out what works for you. Because also those skills, like a lot of it is just like works across, like operating a camera that works on every level. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So like yeah. if you work on, you know, so I feel like those skills, even like documentary filming, like that 
comes into like content creation for yeah. yourself you know i agree and yeah. I, that's one thing too because i know a lot of people it's are getting into filmmaking now because we're a lot of people are so talented on social media i think where it gets scary is that they limit themselves to like one thing where it's like dude try out everything and because mm -hmm. you don't know what will stick with you if you don't try at first so yeah yeah no it's it's definitely crazy to see just like how many how filmmaking has like grown because like going back to like what you're saying about like you know like parents expectations and like like filmmaking definitely did not seem like a feasible job especially no, back no. then in like 2014 to that like mm -hmm. video was big but it wasn't as big as it is now yeah. you know so it's definitely crazy to just see how many filmmakers there are and talented people there are on yeah, instagram so dude, it's it's hard to like stand out or even just you know create your own path and like be different you know mm -hmm. so yeah um what was that transition like though to um getting back on that story like what was the transition from your filming you know documentaries all these different things like when did you start taking content creation for yourself seriously and mm -hmm. uh eventually quitting your job right yeah i think i, I this was in 2021 damn time is flying but yeah. 2021 where i really was like when i hit the 10k on tiktok that's when i started getting gifted collaborations i think my first one was with small rig and i was like "Ooh, like what could i do with this how else can i share and inspire the people because at the core of it like the root is that i want to inspire other people like when i see the comments and i'm and i'm inspiring other people or i'm helping them out with their journey that's kind of what fills my cup up in that way um so when i decided to quit my nine to five job it was obviously very risky because it was a great paying job but i was like no i really think i could do this yeah and it's just believing in myself more and more and knowing that i could always go back to a job or whatever it is like if i don't try then that's failing in itself um so i think it was confirmation when i quit my job they actually rehired me um as a contractor oh, wow. and paid way more than what i was getting paid and then the next month it was like an alicia keys gig and it was just back to back to back like when you let go of something that's not serving you any purpose anymore there's so much abundance and blessings that come about you and I, that's really how i see life um but i think content creating is definitely something that i do but i i'm more of a filmmaker in that sense mm. um who shares educational film tips and tricks all across social media because there was a point where i was like am i a content creator yes i am but like i want to be seen as a filmmaker yeah um as a cinematographer as a film editor whatever it is but my community is on social media so it's like a good balance that i'm trying yeah, to find for sure mm -hmm. gotcha yeah I, I feel like that's that's some of my favorite people to follow at the same time like not just like content creator sorry for calling you a content no, you're creator. Good, you're good. <laughs> um, but like at the same time like I feel like that's something that I really appreciate is because then you can actually see like work that is actually being made mm -hmm. that is you know like a job that you actually got because I feel like that's where the most value is brought because I feel like there's yeah. a lot of content creators who speak on things and do things like even like editing tutorials but they've never actually had like client jobs or even are still editing client jobs so i feel right. like there's like that disconnect where you really you can be giving tips and you're like hey this is how you like use this software but mm -hmm. like you're not using it in a way that's like getting you work you know right. what i mean like that's it's not true. relevant so i feel like there's sometimes this disconnect like where people just like go tutorial 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 mm -hmm. and, it, and that's cool like i i feel like there is like a place like where you can like learn how to do something but i feel like if you're not applying it yourself i feel like it's a little bit harder to teach yeah i agree with you that you actually make a good point i've never really seen it that way yeah 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 because that's what i personally did when i did youtube and like i've had to take breaks from youtube because mm -hmm. like i just felt like okay i haven't really made anything new i haven't learned acquired any new knowledge i haven't like i don't know that's just the way i felt about it yeah. and like my youtube's may have stayed a little stagnant but um, YouTube's hard YouTube's to stay consistent hard. with it. Like I've started a few months ago, and not like late last year, and it's been it's been pretty inconsistent. But I've seen growth with like three videos that I posted last year. So I was like, okay, well maybe I'll just let it stick, whatever like that. But yeah, YouTube is a different game. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's the most rewarding, and like what I've heard. Um, from other creators who've been on the podcast it's like one of the best platforms though mm -hmm. even for our personal like um our digital assets like 
all the sales come from mm. um like we can see where it comes from and they all come from youtube yeah like it's like 90 percent youtube it's just because i think people are on their computers they want to learn they're looking for something um and yeah if you're an editor you should definitely check out cinepax's digital assets they have thousands of effects that you can easily drag and drop into any editor like final cut davinci resolve premiere after effects cap cut the list goes on and since you're listening to this podcast use promo code pod 20 you're going to get 20 percent off your digital asset order and if you don't want to spend any money check out the free samples because we have thousands of free sample effects that you can use in any project now back to the episode I wanted to get back to something you mentioned um, when you hit 10K on TikTok and you said you got a gift collaboration. Can you speak a little bit of what a gift collaboration is and like what the like how you started working like with brands like that? Yeah, I mean, gifted collaborations are when the brand actually just sends you the products and it the the gear is pretty much like over $100. So when I was starting out, I was like, oh, this is something that saves me $100 in my pocket because they're sending me lights or audio gear or stuff like that. So that's what a gifted collaboration is. It's like, it's not that they're expecting you to post on their lights, but it is like, it's a nice gesture that they sent it to you that is so natural, at least for me to be like, oh, I want to post something about these lights. And that's kind of how they they market their own products through these content creators. Yeah. Um, but as I posted one, a few more started coming into my emails and then a few more. And I was like, okay, cool. This is really fun. Like I really value these brands um and they also value the content creators because there is a fine line between like oh well i don't know if your product will serve me any good so even along the the journey as like creating content online is having to say no to a lot and i'm still learning a lot of those yeah as well because i'm just like oh no i think this is really good um yeah i mean and it's hard because i i've been in the same situation and like it's sick at first like when you're first starting out because you're like like, oh, it's a $500 light, you know? Yeah. But then at a certain point, you have to think about like how much time that's actually taking you and the amount of value you're bringing. Mm -hmm. um, because like, I'm sure you're at the point where you don't just take gear for free mm -hmm. and yeah. you also want payment on top of that. Right. Um, when did you, I mean, is that something you do now or? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah I don't take gifted collaborations anymore. I think yeah. it really highly depends on the product. Um, then I'll be like, okay, cool. Like I'll take it, whatever. Cause I don't have to buy like a drone or something like that. Yeah. Um, but I think now it's also an ongoing conversation. Like to be honest at Sony, there was just like a group of us talking and being vulnerable about like, Hey, like what are you guys' experiences with brands? Like how much you guys charge yeah. blah, blah, blah. Cause everybody's different and everybody brings different things to the table. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's tricky. Yeah. It, it is it, tricky. It, it, it's, it's hard because brands will even, I feel like some will make make like it's part of it like oh we'll trade you a piece of gear for a piece of content right you know and that you just have to figure out your value i think when mm -hmm. starting out if you have no gear and you're just making good videos and good content like that's a that's a good way to start yeah but you also don't want to be like unless if you want to be the gear person like you also have to find that fine line because i i've taken like you know people have sent me like lights and products and i'm like one, I either hate this and I'm gonna like destroy your product. <laughs> like it's like, you know, like I thought I'd yeah. like it and I was like, this is horrible. Like I like my whatever better, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you've gotten some of those before. Yeah, there's a lot of things that are just collecting dust or in my storage and I don't I don't even use. Yeah, so, so I feel like that's, that's one thing that you get into like um, Moody Darkroom was on and he talked about the same thing. He was, that's like when you can start pretty early like getting those uh, gifted collaborations like mm -hmm. even at like a thousand subscribers like I think especially if you start like if you let's say you bought like I don't know like your camera and you bring some type of like what is it like um, perspective you yeah. know like you're like hey like I got this camera and I really like using it for this it has this feature yada yada mm -hmm. and then brands are just going to reach out or if it's a light so I think that's a really good way to start as yeah. like a content creator but 
it can be a vicious cycle I it feel is. like yeah. yeah and I think that's how I started to like aside from small rig a lot of gimbal companies were reaching out because I did start with gimbal tutorials so it really is like if anybody's starting out and your goal is like I want lights then do videos on lights I think and yeah. then lighting companies will reach out to you yeah. but yeah I think and then I, you get like weird stuff do you get like dude, yeah. I get like <laughs> I, I did a video on like these lights <laughs> like they're uh, like I get like massage neck things that's like all funny. sorts of I'm like it has nothing to do with my channel. Like, right. Yeah. And that's like, so random. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, I'll give you a five star review on Amazon, but like, I'm not going to make a video. Like, yeah. I, and that's the thing. They want dedicated videos. Like, mm -hmm. I think like when you start knowing your value too, is like, don't do a dedicated video, especially on YouTube mm -hmm. is like, I will put it in a portion of my video. So you yeah. make your YouTube video about like, I don't know, like how to set up car rigs, right? And then halfway through the video, if you're like, oh, if you're wondering how I got this like red light behind me, this yeah. is the the GVM, yada, yada. And then there's like a minute segment. So do just like a, you know, use chat GPT when you're talking to these. That's what I That's do so now. That's so funny. Chat GPT <laughs> is like my lifesaver sometimes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Especially when talking to these brands, like I just copy it in and I'm just like, help me respond to this. Yeah, like, same with contracts. So I'm like, can you... Um, point out any red flags in the contract oh wow yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a good one yeah i'm actually working on a youtube video right now about like how i implement ai into mm. um this podcast oh what yeah so we, we we do a few different things i've been using like it's really good at like i'll feed the whole transcript from adobe mm -hmm. into chat gpt and it will create like really nice chapter markers that have like oh, really nice smart. descriptions so like mm -hmm. because like my editor was just giving me ones that said like adobe movies filming and it was like not very useful and then yeah. so it literally like gave me like really nice like chapter markers that were oh. like 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 people can look down right now and be like like capture working with brands mm, that's dope. her sony trip to Kando. Yeah. yeah so actually that's really smart because i'm over yeah. here watching my own youtube videos like okay pause it's at 6 49 like yeah. when i start talking about the gear like exactly no, yeah i haven't even done it for an actual youtube video but that would it would work as well and then yeah. it obviously can help like brainstorm ideas for like uh descriptions and captions and things mm -hmm. like that obviously i still tweak it and i still go in because like it's not that good but yeah. like it, it's a good starting point i feel like that you have to like mold but yeah um, i agree yeah, let's 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 get back to so you quit your job and then they ended up hiring you and paying you more. You worked with Alicia Keys. Mm -hmm. um, what what did you work uh, with Alicia Keys on? It was primarily for her social content. So we were just um, we were just brainstorming what we could do for social content, especially for her makeup line that she mm -hmm. has or her skincare line. She calls them offerings, which I really love. And just working with her, she's just so genuine and everything she puts out especially her offerings are so intentional um i actually worked with her again last week so that was oh, dope wow. yeah and it was pretty much the same concept it's like running around so they're filming a whole campaign but i'm r working directly with her to film a lot of the social content for a lot of her offerings sick stuff. Mm -hmm. that's crazy yeah wow um and then so when you were still in the Bay Area and you recently moved to LA, right? Yeah. So what, what kind of went into that decision to making that move, um, especially with like, you know, doing this full time. So you're still taking gigs on the side, right? Yeah. Or is that, yeah. So yes. talk a little bit about that decision. So I moved from the Bay, like I love the Bay. Are you from the Bay? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, I love the Bay. I just think there's also, there's so much talent and culture and community, it's so diverse and it's it's home, it's always gonna be home. And I think that my choice to moving to LA was one, I like to be uncomfortable because I feel like that's where growth just like happens. And two, there was a lot of things falling in line for me out here. And I was just like, okay, well, I could always try it out. Cause again, I could always go back home if I didn't like it. Yeah. But ever since being here, there's just so many things that have been falling into place for me and confirmations and just back to back opportunities. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like I made the right decision. Cause for a long time I was like, nah, I'm good off LA. Like yeah. I love the Bay. We can make something out here, yeah. stuff like that. But I got to spread my wings and see where it could take me. Cause like, I want to do LA. I want to do New York. I want to just travel and see what, where I could take my talents and not really be so stagnant in one place. Cause yeah. when I get bored, I get bored. So I got to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I actually had a question that I forgot of earlier. Cause you said you started with like gimbals. Mm -hmm. um, 
what is the best what like what's your go-to gimbal if you since you said you've Ooh. tried out a lot of gimbals like yeah. what's what's the go-to currently today i mean it's the rs4 pro okay with dji yeah i think it's just they've developed it so much better because i used to have the old one the dji and it was heavy and it was like dude this is too much for me but the fact that the rs4 pro auto locks it's way lighter yeah um and it's just easy to carry around like that's probably my go-to right yeah, now. yeah i think i have the rs3 mini mm -hmm. i think i have that one that one's pretty nice but yeah, yeah the auto lock sounds nice i know i was like oh, it's such a convenient thing yeah i've i've had a couple from juin yeah I think they, yeah and they too. used to be really good and then some of the recent ones i didn't like so much so yeah, yeah i feel like Dang. i feel like dji is kind of like they're just they drop so much stuff it's insane do they really do and yeah i'm excited yeah yeah but um so what's kind of next for you right now out in la like what um kind of are your goals like with youtube instagram mm -hmm. and like content you know just like working with like brands and like music videos like what's kind of like the goal right now I think actually was I was telling you just earlier I was having a conversation with myself because I sat myself down and was like dude I want to do so much stuff like not just video work but like I want to build my business in a way where it thrives on its own and mm -hmm. that way I could focus on my content or my video or my films that I'm working on but as of right now I'm well going into this year I was very intentional with like I want to get more into narrative filmmaking so my homies and I um, actually shot a, a short film called Deville, which is pretty dope. It's supposed to come out before the end of this year. And okay, then cool. music videos, I started to touch on again. Like those kind of come in and out, but I think because I haven't been intentional with it. But after doing one I recently shot and I'm currently editing right now, like it's a great way to storytell in such a short form. Yeah. So I really am going into music videos a lot more. And then, of course, YouTube. I'm dropping a video this week after like two months and it's an inconsistent thing, but I really have like, I have a running doc where I have all my ideas for YouTube. I just have to really sit down with it. Once I get intentional with it, I think it'll really do well. Yeah. Um, social media content. I still want to do short form, but I think YouTube comes prior to that because I could always cut down my YouTube videos for short form. Yeah. Or I feel like too, like there's like the thing, like where you're filming, a YouTube video because sometimes it's hard I feel like it's like almost more work to mm -hmm. like edit a YouTube video into short form yeah whereas like if you just filmed real quick like on a separate camera on your yeah. phone or like made it vertical and then just like got those shots separately like sometimes I feel like that's almost like easier like yeah. if you just like sometimes I'll do a whole YouTube video and I'm like all right like I'll use the b-roll but like let me just film like a talking point because like yes. I feel like the way you talk is different like yeah between the platforms but I, I agree I've, I've kind of struggled with that yeah I think it's finding a good balance because I also have been thinking about that I'm like okay well once I'm done with it let me at least do an intro and then like you yeah. mentioned I'm gonna just cover the b-roll that I shot for long form into mm -hmm. this yeah yeah it's, it's, it's hard nice. because like you ha really have to post so many places because mm -hmm. like I don't know like especially keeping up with just like tiktok youtube i don't yeah. even know if tiktok is like viable anymore like, i don't think so i don't know anyone like getting like no one's came on the podcast recently and been like oh i've been getting a hell of views on tiktok it's instagram like, now i think because yeah. tiktok is very um organic i think they're not even pushing out a lot of cinematic content anymore it's a lot like people eating on their phone <laughs> like you know asmrs yeah. or just filming on their phone so yeah or just something crazy. crazy that you capture on your phone yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. I feel like it's more like, yeah, just like talking. But yeah, I, I don't really know about like TikTok pushing any of that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's definitely been Instagram. I've definitely seen like a lot of reels pop off there and yeah. then like the growth on there. But yeah. It's been crazy. What a it, crazy time. It is crazy. Yeah, it's crazy just seeing. I mean, we just had a YouTube short of like the podcast blow up. And oh, that was what? insane. Yeah. So it just hit this morning. I checked it was at 2 million views. Nice. And like uh, we gained probably like. 12,000 subscribers That's a and it's crazy from like shorts yeah but it's cool because like you can link there's like a whole video i watched about like uploading youtube shorts and i was doing it when i first started and i got lazy <laughs> like you have to you can't set a thumbnail unless you upload it from your phone wait what yeah. like a short on a short oh I didn't so know you have to upload that. from your phone and then you can pick the thumbnail but then there's other features that you can't do on the phone that you can do on the computer oh, so then weird. you have to go to your computer and then you ha then you like do all the title and then you can like link another video mm -hmm. so like i link the podcast so it like it's almost like a 
like kind of like a uh, like a duet on TikTok. You know mm-hmm. how like you click that little button. Yeah. It basically has that, and it takes you to the full podcast. So it actually boosted the original podcast views, which was oh, super what? sick. But like, it was just so I, I stopped doing it. I yeah. just I'm like I don't even care about the thumbnail. Like, just pick whatever. Yeah. Like, so I stopped doing that. But I Dang, don't know. It's like the small tedious things. We're just like okay, now I'm good. Yeah, I, I did it for like the first like 10, 20, I don't know like clips I uploaded. But yeah. Wow. Um, yeah what what kind of made you start i mean you mentioned it but like was there anything else that kind of like made you start filming content around yourself like you said you wanted to um you were you just kind of had this idea for this gimbal video were there like Mm -hmm. any other like youtubers that you were like looking up to or like any Mm -hmm. other content creators that like um inspired you to maybe like start this journey i there probably was but i don't think they were it wasn't strong enough for me to remember right now in this moment because i've always like i mentioned earlier i started with this thing called soul speaking sessions where i'm Mm. just vulnerably talking about my story and like how i was in the early 20s that way i mean i'm a advocate for wanting people to or hoping people would um see that there's light at the end of the tunnel like they're not truly trapped in the dark right because i've been there um so that's kind of where i started and i was like okay i have this fire in me like there's just this determination like i'm a go-getter And I think this was an avenue for me to teach, like without even teaching and having Mm -hmm. fun with it. Cause I don't want to be a teacher. I just want to be like somebody that someone else looks up to and like, oh cool. Like because of her journey, I could do it too type of thing. So that's really the root of all of it um, as to why I started. So yeah, I can't really pinpoint any inspirate like content creator or anything. Probably the OG YouTubes for sure. I'm like, oh cool. Like it's like Jason Vong. I don't know if you know him. Mm, maybe he does not. yeah like he does he's a og youtuber um i mean people like i justine as well like yeah just the way she's able to represent for women in film as well i think yeah. that's huge for me yeah and it's actually crazy it's it's we've been talking about this for a while you're actually the first female we've had on the podcast really? which is really bad yeah we've been what? trying to get more females on so yeah yeah we're trying to get more women on the podcast so wow yeah. that's crazy okay yeah, yeah that's we want crazy more res- and representation yeah time. i appreciate it it's <laughs> it's horrible um we've been talking about it for so long and then like last time like yeah we we've reached out it's it's yeah. been really hard i think we're gonna try and do like more remote episodes because it is hard to just it, it's nice having everyone in person because mm-hmm. it's just um i don't know it just feels better with like yeah. the production and everything it's easier especially expecting people to like it's nice like when people can set up a camera and like record their audio separate remotely but, right you know instead of gets, like zoom or like the, t- yeah. the quality of it yeah so yeah, yeah. But dang, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for coming on. Yeah. We Thank appreciate you for it. Having yeah. Me. Yeah. It's definitely been inspiring seeing your story. It's funny just like hearing um, you starting on TikTok around that time because I definitely just saw you kept like popping up and just mm-hmm. like filming like, you know, your style of videos just around the Bay Area and everything. So yeah, it's been a time. Yeah. I love it. I got a couple more questions and then we also have some uh, videos that we have queued up. Do you have any advice for, you know, any beginning filmmakers getting into this, um, you know, this field? Like if they want to make educational content or if they just want to get on like the, you know, videographer grind of like music videos and just, you know, creating, you know, content for Alicia Keys and things like that. I think it's, I have so many, I just asking them like oh shit there's hella um but one i think it's start with what you have because a lot of people limit themselves with like i don't have the fanciest cameras i just have my phone and that's a great place to start your phone has a camera i think that's the best way to go because as you keep doing one thing you're gonna keep getting better at it and two i think it's just be gentle with yourself i think it's really easy for imposter syndrome to creep up on us and be like i'm not good enough and then we stop and we don't even try anymore Mm. Um, So looking at that as your best friend and as like a mentor in a way and being like, why are these feelings coming up for me? Um, Because understanding that when you do one project, especially one for yourself and then three for others, like and then there's something that you're nitpicking about it. That's where you kind of have to surrender to it, because that's something that I've had to learn, where it was like letting go of expectations. I think that's a big thing because you're just not going to ever be satisfied with it if you always put an expectation on it. Um, another thing is just to have fun I think that's the biggest thing that people forget to do is like yo have fun with your content have fun with creating with other people collaboration community it's so important to surround yourself with people who will uplift you and help you and like support you in any way Um, and then lastly 
it's what I mentioned earlier is create your own opportunities and don't wait, don't sit around waiting for it to happen to you. And then also don't limit yourself. I don't know if I said that already, <laughs> but practice, practice, practice. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing because that's how I started off in filmmaking is I fell in love with post-production mm. and it's because I was going out filming my family or vlogs and then going into like one true media. Like, mm. I don't even know if anybody knows what that is, but it was like a is. internet software where I could edit. Oh. Yeah. And it would have the tagline at the end. <laughs> it was funny, <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, it's just going out and whatever it is that you want to learn. There's so many resources out there, YouTube universities, like free and like courses and stuff like that. But yeah, there's yeah. like, yeah, I, I definitely like what you said about the phone too, because I feel like people are like, Oh, I need a TSLR. I need this. Mm -hmm. I need that. Like even like any camera is going to work these days. And I think just like getting out there and just getting those reps in and just like creating for fun, like you said yeah. too, because like, it's not that serious. And I think just putting stuff out there, you can always take it offline later. Yeah. Like I think just like getting in that motion of like uploading and like creating, and then something's going to hit and mm -hmm. then you're going to, you know what I mean? It's going to feel good. But like, I feel like just like, yeah creating for the right reasons at the same yeah. time it's really important because yeah i i feel like and also people come up to me like hey what camera should i get like i get mm -hmm. this all the time and i'm like just get the newest iphone like if you're like really right. gonna like invest into a camera like worst case scenario if you don't like filming like you just have a new yeah, phone like, that's true. instead of like a dslr like because the especially like the i think they just dropped like an iphone app now uh like really? iMovie yeah, there's like oh, an well you can eye. film with your phone, but it looks better? Yeah, you can like oh. adjust shutter speed and everything now just like on the iPhone. Because before I think you had to use the Blackmagic app. Mm -hmm. um, and there's other ones too, but yeah. Dang, so I, crazy. Yeah, so I feel like, yeah, just filming, yeah, just yeah. getting out there with you. I know, and I feel like a few of my content, just to help the audience who only film on their phones, I try to create content just with my phone. Yeah. That way they're not like, well, how are you telling me to do this when you're filming on a Sony? Like... I feel like that's a big problem too. Like yeah. as we're saying this, we're filming on like a giant right. LED wall screen. Um, but like, I mean, I was there like I don't know, like ten years ago. Like I had like a yeah. I was film. I filmed like a music video in high school. Like I didn't even have a DSLR. Like I had like a GoPro. Yeah. And I filmed like I had like a DSLR like with a GoPro, and that's all I could afford was like a cheap little GoPro. So mm -hmm. I saved up enough money to get a DSLR. But nice. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean. Yeah. So yeah, don't limit you, don't limit yourself. And then I think authenticity is very important as well. So just be true to you. Don't don't yeah. care about what other people say or think about you because that's the biggest thing too. I feel like it's really easy to chase all these trends and mm -hmm. everything on like Instagram reels and this type of filmmaking that's really popular on Instagram. Like yeah. I just feel like I keep seeing like the same. It's pretty repetitive sometimes. Yeah. Like I, I did a post on my story a couple of days ago and I was like, is halation played out? Oh yeah. Like the glow and yeah, the, the orange film glow. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Every time I go on reels, I feel like I just see like halation galore. It's just like glowing. And it's Dude, like, it's so like, it starts to become unintentional sometimes. Yeah, I feel like it just becomes like a preset that like people are like, oh, this is what like cinematic video looks yeah. like, you know, like, and it's, it's not even like, they're just doing it because they see it and mm -hmm. they're not doing it for like a reason. Yeah. Yeah. Fun stuff, man. I learn a lot from the internet. Yeah. <laughs> If you're a photographer or filmmaker, you should definitely check out Cinepax lens filters. We have lens filters for photographers and filmmakers that offer unique in-camera effects. We have soft filters to give your photos that nice cinematic glow, as well as in-camera effects filters that can really level up your shot. Use promo code LENS15 at checkout and you're going to get 15% off your lens filter order. Now back to the episode. What is uh, one piece of gear that you think is like crucial for your, uh, you know, mm. content creation and video production? I think audio. Mm. Are you just talking about specific gear? Just anything. Yeah, yeah I anything think audio that you couldn't is live really without. Important. Yeah, probably. What's your go-to mic for audio? It's the Rode Wireless Go 2. Okay. Yeah, it just clips on um, or I'm holding it. So, yeah, I think that's my go-to because audio is just as important as imagery, so... Yeah, I feel like honestly, like if someone was like starting out getting gear and they already have an iPhone, I would say just get audio. Exactly. Because, yeah. Yeah, because it's like the iPhone audio is not you, like you could use a voice memo, but if you're using your iPhone to record, then yeah, invest in a microphone because I think it's important. Yeah, because you can get those. Yeah, I mean, if you're recording voiceover later, that's fine to use voice memo. But like mm -hmm. if you're 
like you're doing like a camera. talking shot yeah if you're all the way in a field like you're not going to be able to hear so yeah. i feel like that's like one of the most basic things and i feel like people would rather watch a video with good audio than bad video Dude, it will take me out i'll be like oh bad audio i'm scrolling yeah for sure yeah. so yeah what um what do you have coming up in the future here uh mm -hmm. what are the plans for the capture um the content you said youtube is going to be a big focus do you yeah. have any big projects coming up you mentioned the short Ooh. film we'll link that down below but for sure yeah yeah i mean as i mentioned the short film deville we've been working on it it's like a labor of love among the homies and i um my homie figo he actually wrote and directed it it's his first directorial debut as a, mm -hmm. and a writer as well so that's super exciting um we're currently going through the campaigning process cool. um, our social media is pretty popping because Gabby, who runs it, who's also our friend, has been a, doing a great job. Because as, even as we were filming, like, we had three days on set. She was posting live, and people, it was getting hella people excited. Yeah. So that was always the goal, to get people excited about DeVille. And then aside from that... Um, what was your role on the uh, short film? I'm a DP and an editor. Okay, sick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. that's exciting. And then a music video called Bakunawa... Um, it's probably released now from the drop okay. or something like that. But that was fun because it's with Ruby Abara. She's a, a pretty well-known artist in the Bay Area. Mm. And it was dope working with her because she's also a Filipina. Mm -hmm. um, and it was funny because I called that out prior, like a week before. And I was like, I want to work with like other Filipino creators and stuff yeah. like that. Um, and that music video means a lot to me as well because the intention and the creativity that sh and the love that she's poured into it. She hasn't dropped a project in like five years mm. and through that time from then to now she's been really creating this and rebranding so i really wanted to do it justice and um yeah i was also the dp and editor for that as well but i'm like that's a music video i'm very very proud of and i awesome. think that's where i was like i kind of want to do more music videos like i really yeah. do want to do more music videos so are you directing at all or you just dp and edit do you want to direct music videos or do you want to like just dp and edit i kind of want to well for this last one i also co-directed so i do want part in like there's a there's probably a part of me that does want to direct mm. um and then kind of just have a camera operator or whatever like that or a dp aside from yeah. that I, so i do want to try directing a music video instead of dping but i love dping like there's just this yeah i'm very i'm a visual creative for sure gotcha yeah because i feel like if you're not like if you're like okay this song's cool whatever it's mm -hmm. more fun to dp yeah but if it's like something that you're actually like passionate about like that one that you're saying like it is fun to have like a a, a play in the creative like if you're passionate about it you yeah. know but like if you're really not like and this is whatever like it be and it becomes more of a check like mm -hmm. like you know like you're doing that's it for money true. like it's i mean that's what i've experienced through doing music videos you're just like it feels a little bit like you know repetitive and yeah like you're like all right but that's true that's why like i mentioned earlier i like to implement some type of storytelling so this one yeah. is like all like very much a, we kind of called it a short film in a way but not in a musical yeah. sense i feel like that makes the editing a lot easier in music <laughs> videos because then you don't have to rely on effects you don't have to rely yeah. on like you know and you can kind of just lay out the story first and then you have like a layer with like your performances and then you can kind of just cut those in whenever yeah that's very true yeah yeah so uh have you edited narrative stuff before or i is have that um a long time ago okay, actually gotcha. so it's i haven't actually edited a narrative short film like straight up but mm -hmm. a lot of my youtube videos or a lot of my my short films in a way are very much storytelling so yeah not really a narrative short but in the program i'm in um i got into the Issa ray program and we're actually i'm an editor on that so that's one i'm learning a lot how to edit a narrative short film along with working with a sound composer which is super dope oh wow and then a director um she's amazing so yeah, there's just been a lot of learning curves here. Although I do want to step away from editing because I've been doing it for so long and I yeah. just want to focus on being a DP because I have a lot to learn still as a DP mm -hmm. and I want to put a lot of time and energy into that. Yeah, I feel like editing is probably one of the most time-consuming things. So do you want to get like an editor for your content? I do, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah right. that's the plan because that's something that I've been putting out there and that's a big move that I want to make for my business is at least hire an editor that way i'm focused more on the creative and producing it and then i could just yeah. i have a hard time letting go though because i have a certain style but it's like yeah. i have to let go 
and let it breathe and then because they could probably do better than I could. Yeah, and I think even just like the like freeing yourself up like from that amount of time like especially if you're tired of editing like mm-hmm. it is hard to let go of that control yeah but i think at a certain point like if they get it close enough it's better than the you know what i mean just yeah. even the quantity that you can put out and then just the amount of stress and like it just becomes more consistent and yeah. i feel like that's what i've seen from a lot like especially with this podcast mm-hmm. shout out jesse he like edits everything shout so out Shout out, Jesse. I, I've still been <laughs> editing a few clips here and there, but, mm-hmm. like, the full podcast, everything, like, he just handles everything, and it's wow. amazing. Like, I don't have to do yeah. anything. So that's that's been pretty sick, and I think that is, like, if you can hire an editor, I feel like editors are crazy valuable, especially mm-hmm. if someone can, like, match your style, take notes, and, like, you can, like, you know, rely on them. I feel like that's a pretty big thing. Yeah, so I'm putting it out there that I will – do that by the end of this year before gotcha. the year ends yeah so you're done like you, you probably you don't want to do any editing well no or? i'll do some editing like yeah. even with for me as well and this is probably something i also have to practice letting go but like when i'm filming something as a dp i do prefer to edit it yeah, yeah, yeah. um just because it's also in my head how i see it cut together yeah um i think it's just my content like my youtube mm. and my socials where i i yeah. want an editor yeah i feel yeah. like that's i feel like that's pretty standard you know like i feel like especially as a dp like i feel like especially like when you're the one filming it like uh, i feel like you almost have like the bin folder in your head already Mm -hmm. of like where all the like because like if you if you get this footage raw like it's also like i've gotten projects and i've edited for people like you have to like watch everything yeah you know like you weren't there on set so you don't know what happened you know Mm -hmm. so i feel like you're kind of coming into it blind and i feel like that takes like a a good amount of time as an editor yeah whereas like if you filmed this music video you would know exactly how it's going to get cut together and it's not going to take that long yeah that's true and i think that's why it's such a blessing to have this um knowledge and skill as an editor before i like went into DPing because as I'm on set I'm like okay well we don't have time we gotta cut shots like we don't need this because in the post production whether I was editing it or not like it's not necessary yeah, yeah. so it's cool what um so you mentioned like your business is your business um do you have a portion of the business that's like creating social media content for like um like Alicia Keys and like some of these other you know like brands and whatnot is that your business or is your business just like um i think it's just overall film production gotcha. whatever categories fall into that whatever has anything to do with video production mm-hmm. in a way yeah so that's kind of what i felt it's pretty general is there an aspect that you want to focus on like that you want to get more jobs for your business on like do you want to get like do more social content mm-hmm. do you want to do like more music videos or like I what's kind of the more, goal i think the goal for my business is very much music videos mm. and social content like doing yeah. social for other people like ugc or something and then yeah because that's what a lot of people are looking for nowadays is like social content because al- everybody's like attention span is not where it's at anymore mm-hmm. so businesses and even sometimes music videos like i'm working with a few artists where they just want social content yeah for their music and i'm like okay cool that's great but like let's not lose yeah. <laughs> like this long form yeah um piece because yeah. it's a beautiful thing yeah no I, I it's tough uh we have, you should check out the episode we did with uh i don't know if you know him his name's dr clips i feel like i've seen him yeah yeah so he was on and he films like all the he filmed like all those viral clips for like fly Anna boss mm-hmm. and like you saw him on tiktok yeah so that guy oh he, my god yeah he was on he was like the first episode when we came back and his take on every like he's like he doesn't hate music videos, but he thinks like if the song's blown up enough, then it's good to do a music video. Yeah. But like, it's just all social clips mm-hmm. and I've done a good amount of social clips and it's, it's crazy how like they're just like, we're talking like the reach on Instagram, Yeah. but like, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. I, I feel like it's artists. That's like kind of what they want right now. It's just yeah. like those. And I feel like if it, it gives you a chance to like experiment mm-hmm. and like try different techniques and like with, like less commitment you know it's like a yeah. 15 30 second clip and you can like try like a really cool film technique that's really true that's funny i was supposed to work with fly on a boss oh really? and then um the time conflict and then i one of them is pregnant so yeah, she's about that. to pop oh wow. <laughs> any day now yeah. yeah so that's really cool yeah i really love their stuff as well but in terms of 
the social media music video stuff i just hope that people still do or consider it at least because we could always again cut it down for social yeah or and film maybe, social clips like i've done yeah. that too like because you have the lighting set up you know like you could even just have a separate camera off to the side like mounted vertically yeah. and just film you know like 15 seconds or you could obviously cut it or you know i feel like there's a lot of things but i feel like I feel like maybe creating like a drop around mm -hmm. like a song, you know, you film the full music video and then you film like yeah, 15 seconds. Clips. Yeah. Because you already have the location, you already have the lighting, you already mm -hmm. have the crew there. Even if you film it on your phone, like I feel like, yeah. yeah. And that's crazy too. Cause we implement it in our shot list. Like we're like, okay, vertical mm -hmm. or whatever. So we'll have a second camera just for that as well. Um, and then even with phones, I was just talking to a group of people about this, how it's crazy that businesses or even with this alicia keys thing she just wanted everything on the phone like yeah. everything so you could pull up with your phone get paid to shoot um social content but it's because it's organic for social yeah, yeah. so it just makes sense yeah and you also have to know like what to capture what you know what i mean like I, there still is like filmmaking that goes into film fo filmmaking like on these yeah. social clips you know like you need the wide shot like that's filmed on the point five, and then you mm -hmm. get into like you know what i mean i feel yeah. like there still is like filmmaking like you see the viral posts mm -hmm. that go viral but there's still like filmmaking elements in there i feel like yeah that's that true like like it's not just like willy-nilly filming on your phone like just filming anything you know but yeah. like i feel like there, there's like some still like some editing and still something like concepts are still there yeah there's the idea and intention behind the video exactly yeah mm -hmm. But yeah, like you can you can do anything with a phone, I guess. You really could. Yeah, this is the music video you were talking about. Yeah, um, so this is actually not even the final version. Like, we're still going through rounds of editing, but it's in a pretty good spot. So that's why a lot of the clips aren't even colored. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah but this has my heart just as much as it is her project it is like mine as well because bakunawa it comes from Filipino folklore and it's it's kind of like moon eater. Um, it's stepping into your power because you know as us we suppress our emotions so much to a point where it starts to like eat us alive and like we allow that to we allow that weight to we you know the weight that we carry is not really ours to carry so the song um that's kind of what it means she's taking her power back and then she eventually becomes a bakunawa um so is that the cool. artist or is that an actor for the um that's one of the features oh okay, June. Cool. yeah she's pretty dope um, and it's crazy because this music video, like, I kind of, like, this is super rough because I'm implementing AI uh, in yeah, a lot yeah. of them where I'm just like, okay, I'll expand um, the frame a little bit more. But it's been fun. It was cool working with so many people. It was a three-day shoot. The first day was at the Crockett studio. It was 14 hours. But it was really fun. And I think just meeting everybody, um, yeah, that was a fun Sick. show. Yeah. What's your take on uh using ai in Ooh. like music videos and like because you mentioned you were doing some generative fill and it's such a buzzword and it's so polarized right now like mm -hmm. if anyone hears there's any ounce of ai like people just get mad yeah i know um like there was that movie late night with the devil did mm -hmm. you hear about this mm -hmm. they used they use like so they had these title cards the the, the movie's basically just like a talk show right mm -hmm. and it's like a 70s talk show or 50 i don't know and basically like there's just like we'll be right back so there's these little title cards and they mm -hmm. use like just like mid journey like create a 70 styles halloween back card or like uh oh, like a, a title card mm -hmm. something very simple like a graphic design artist could have made it in like 10 minutes yeah but like they just saved money and did it in mid journey oh. and then they got a bunch of backlash yeah I and it's see that. it's it's tricky like it is tricky. I, I didn't really care like when i saw it and i'm like it's whatever like mm -hmm. A graphic you could have paid someone on fiverr to make that for like yeah. 15 bucks like whatever like someone got paid to make it like it's, it's a tool so i don't know that's where i'm at but yeah. i don't know how you feel about i agree i think there's like pros and cons to it this is a conversation i just had with adobe because they're very like concerned about the community and they want to ensure that they're creating these products that don't feel like people are losing their jobs over it right yeah how i look at ai at least in my workflow is very much an assistant editor without having yeah. an assistant editor or like a collaborative partner in that sense but i do see the part where it's like i forgot what um i don't know what movie it was but they ended up firing like a team because it ended up just using ai i think that's where we kind of have to draw the line where it's like where does the authenticity lie like are we still using human creative input 
rather than just typing it into AI and seeing what AI generates for us. Mm -hmm. I think that's where we start to lose a human touch on things. And that's where it gets scary because it's like how AI is expanding now even. Um, who knows what it'll be in five, ten years. Like AI making yeah. fully feature films. Like that's wild. Yeah, like whereas right now, like it's still pretty limited in the video space, but it's getting insane. Like Dude, you can... Like, especially, like, I've seen people on TikTok, like, take a mid-journey image, and it doesn't look good. Like, I, I mean, the mid-journey stuff is really sick, but then they put it into, like, other softwares that, like, will animate those images. Mm. And, like, some of the results are, like, half decent, but there's just, like, it's it's getting to a point where, like, it might be able to create B-roll and, like, shots oh. that, like, can be cut in, and then it's just, like, I don't know, like, it's just gonna, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a, I'm in the middle like I'm more towards like yay cool AI but also I understand and I see people who are just very much like T I'm never going to try it that's not in my workflow because also where's I think this is also a question too is like diversity and for example when you're typing in wherever AI website like oh show me a lawyer it's showing you like a white man or something yeah. like that so it's like where's the diversity in that where's yeah. AI pulling all this information and then, in and then it can go the other way too like I've seen like on did you see Google like, mm -hmm. it was, like, show me, like, something. And then it was just, like, Google was trying to make it, like, diverse. Oh. And then, it like, it wouldn't show, like, a, like, it wouldn't show, like, a white guy. Like, it was just, like, they tried to go so far. It was just, like, a crazy, like, mess up. Like, and then, like, Damn. like it was just, like, it was, like, almost, like, rate, like, it, it was just bad. Damn. Like, yeah. And yeah. it's just, like, it's just crazy. Like, where is it take getting all this information from? And, like, mm -hmm. stock footage is kind of, like, interesting, too. Yeah. Um, because stock footage is like, I don't know, like it's like taking all these clips. Like, so I, I submit my clips to a website called black box, mm -hmm. like where I uh, upload stock footage. I've did it a while ago, but like now I'm getting a percentage for like feeding to AI engines. Oh, so that's like, crazy. it's kind of scary. Like it's like just taking all these drone shots and mm -hmm. like, I feel like stock footage is really just going to be like oh give me an aerial view of the what? mountains and it's just gonna like create this image of like you know what i mean like of all these random mountains just i don't know that's true but also i think another concern of from people is like the credibility like yeah of the the art that comes from yeah whatever ai generates i don't know it's stealing from artists uh, you know there's been like yeah. chat gpt saying that it's like or like mid journeys stealing from like you know mm. certain artists like oh create me a photo in the style of like captures you know instagram reels yeah and then it oh, will that's crazy yeah and <laughs> yeah which is crazy but yeah definitely i think also like what you were saying like just like it it is very like one dimensional in the sense of like yeah a lawyer it's just gonna like you have to say like oh give me an asian american lawyer yeah. like it's like it's I don't know. It's it's crazy like that it can have biases and things Dude, like I that know. like who's created it. So that's one of the scary things I think especially um and I think that's why it needs like this human intervention where we can get in there and kind of still I don't have know. that authentic but creativity. I, yeah. I feel like you can't ignore it. Yeah, you can't. In this field, especially like if you don't embrace it or just try to learn it, you're mm -hmm. going to maybe get left behind in yeah, a sense. Yeah. That's true. I think people maybe should get with the program in a sense because i think in that way i'm very intentional when i use ai like i'm not just using it like w like willy-nilly or whatever like i'm in premiere they have really good ai features like the central sound panel i'm not a sound engineer so i'm yeah. like okay like i'm gonna just click auto match or enhance and it's gonna clean up the way i s the way i sound yeah. so it's the, those little things of like ai that i'm pretty much implementing and then generated fill oh i'm taking a static video because i film a lot about myself and i want it to look creative so if we're just filming right here then i'm gonna expand it and i don't know put us in some forest or whatever yeah exactly know. yeah so just intentionality and authenticity and making sure that i still hold that when i'm implementing ai yeah i think for the bigger studios is where it's scary but for like for the small content creators i think it allows us to be more creative and yeah. like you know like you said like you're not a sound engineer but now like a single person like a kid in their bedroom can literally create like especially from like text to video now mm -hmm. like they could literally make an entire like marvel looking film Dude, like from I their know. bedroom and it's like crazy. so I, I think that's cool but then when the stu the bigger studios and you know like with all the resources and like all these professionals that they can hire mm -hmm. um i think that's where it gets a little iffy but yeah i yeah. agree with that yeah sick uh we got one more video josh 
Oh yeah, this was crazy. This one also meant a lot. So is this a music video as well? No, this was um, in partnership with Nikon. It was for their Z8 camera. Okay. So it was like eight days with the Z8 where we had to concept, write, film, shoot, and, oh, well, film and edit all in eight days. Um, and I knew I wanted to go into this with embracing like authenticity and mm -hmm. something about wanting to just share like where I was in my early 20s where it was just dark and depressing to where I am now and just blossoming in that. And then really um yeah just kind of fighting fighting the demons that you know try to try to like kind of attack us in a way um but yeah what's it what's it like working with a brand on something like that where you have to um where they are they do you have times where like the brand is like a little too hands-on and they want like a lot of like almost turn the project like turn you into like a robot like mm -hmm. where you have to like oh you have to put this hashtag and you have to like we want you know you just say this this and that or yeah. like are there times like where you just have freedom or like what's that like working with a brand i think for this one specifically i had full creative freedom yeah um yeah i don't i didn't really have a problem with them saying like oh no this script isn't working because they you just bring anything to the table mm -hmm. um there's some brands where i'm working with where they just kind of switch the whole thing but those are different though those are the ones like for example i'm doing like an icebreakers collaborate like partnership and of course they it's product heavy but i'm trying to still implement my creativity because that's the initial email like they reach out because they like my storytelling and they like my content yeah. so i'm trying to still implement that authenticity of mine without sounding like a robot about yeah. like this product that they want me to sell to my You're customers about the gum? yeah <laughs> okay gotcha <laughs> yeah so Sick. um so just trying to find that balance of like i'll let you say what you like because there's verbatim that they want me to say sometimes. And I'm like, how could I reword this so I don't sound like a robot? Yeah, it's been interesting following creators just on, like, especially filmmakers and seeing how they implement these brand deals. Because, mm -hmm. like, as a creator, that's one of the ways we get paid, you know, yeah. is working with these brands. Because nobody watches commercials anymore. They follow creators. They're watching people spend time on Instagram and TikTok. So yeah. that's where people are. That's where the attention is. So it's been interesting to see like different creators do things. And it's like some of them handle it really gracefully. It's like, wow, that was such a subtle transition. Mm -hmm. And then other ones like one I really didn't like the campaign recently was the uh, art grid AI. I hated that. one. I don't know. I haven't seen that one. So they did like like you can basically take your voice like right now and you can like I could turn into like an old man. And oh like yeah, I, see, no. And it's like taking like <laughs> voice. I, I, I get it's gonna happen, but like I just saw a bunch of like their campaigns, and it was like it was not tastefully done. Yikes. Like it was really bad, and it's just like, like that's especially in that field, like that's straight up taking like voice over people. Yeah. It, it just felt like really. I don't know. I didn't like it. Um, that's like deep fake or something. Like yeah, that. It, it's basically like deep fake, and like I, I, I didn't like where they're going with that. Um, yeah. And there were like ads everywhere, you know. Oh, no. So I, I think that's like one thing you, you definitely want to try and stick to like your own authentic, authenticity when mm -hmm. it comes to like these brand deals. Yeah. As a I creator, think if they were to hit my email, I probably would be like no, because I don't see how that would serve my content. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, like I mean, like you could like make a trailer for like a fake movie, mm -hmm. and then like mm -hmm. use the there's that, but it just feels it feels so like that's a specific job. Yeah, you know, but is that any different than using like I don't know, like Photoshop to generative fill? Like you're taking a VFX person's job. That's true. Dang, see, there's so many things about you know AI. I mean? You're just yeah. questionable. It's, it's tricky, but I just saw that one, and I it just kept, you know, like, as filmmakers, we just get retargeted on ads Yeah. whenever you go on YouTube or wherever, and I just kept Dang. getting that, and I was just like, oh, this is crazy. Like, in the comments, what? people were mad. Like, I saw a pretty big creator. He made a video on it. Oh, no. And, like, he, like, started, he's like, don't you hate AI ads? Oh, and wait, he, like, I've seen that, yeah. I think. and he, like, punched the screen. Um that's crazy yeah actually i don't know if i've seen it, it was a different one but then okay, their yeah. face changed so that was a d totally different ad. No, i think no that no the, there was one with the face changing too yeah yeah that's it was for our grade. yeah oh my and God. it's just crazy it's like um i don't know th there was like really mixed reviews on it you know mm -hmm. so yeah it's crazy but what a wild time we live in yeah that's um so crazy. is there anything else you want to plug for the end of the podcast uh we'll link you all down but we'll link your youtube and instagram down below anywhere mm -hmm. else they should I think um, one follow Deville 
short film on Instagram. Sick. I want to say we'll it's Deville short film. Yeah, I'll send it. To, I don't know the exact. Yeah, it's all good. This out, but yeah, follow Deville on Instagram. Um, we also have a website, and then also drop in a campaign soon, and then yeah, just stay tuned for some dope fire content. Sick. All right. <laughs> cool. Fire. Awesome. Thank you.